welcome to the Arsenal show. We are live. Uh, we've got a full house in us for us tonight. We've joined by Steve K. How you doing, Steve? How you doing, mate? Yeah, I got you. Got you uh, eventually. Yeah, it was. Uh, I just I was a bit late because I was celebrating. So yeah, I, I, I apologise for that for everybody. There we go. And we're joined by Simon Lester. How are you doing, Simon? Evening, everyone. Evening, Kieran, Steve. It's oh, good I've to done. have you back, mate. It's good to have you back. All right, all right. So let's get started. We've got plenty to discuss. We're going to be discussing the the the, the, the fallout, the, the the drama, the the people's people being upset about the fact that Arsenal are currently celebrating or happy with each win. We, we we say it's a every game is a cup final. I don't know what what the, what the hell is that with the hand. We say every game is a cup final. Yet when we celebrate, even a fraction of it being similar to a cup final, people want to get upset about it. So we're going to be discussing that. We're also going to be talking about the loss against Liverpool and the 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 spring back, the bounce back against Villa. Um, we'll be discussing Saka's potential quadruple. Uh, wage boost uh, to 125 grand a week, and Mikel Arteta being offered a new deal. Um, let's start with you, Simon. You was you was at the you was at the Villa game, wasn't you? Yeah. Um, did you do you personally feel the celebrations were over the top? No, I thought it was great. I'll be honest with you. Um, personally, like left early in the morning to get there. I mean, why it was a 12:30 kickoff when it was the only Premier League fixture that day is beyond me but as it happens it it, it it worked well for me because i had to go to work that night but um uh, you know it, it was a game that we should have been out of sight in by half time i don't think they'd had a shot let alone a shot on target in the first half and it was totally dominant and the, the fans from minute one to after the match, is what everybody saw on social media, were, were really up for it. You, I'll be honest, Villa was the it was the worst um, atmosphere from a home ground that I've witnessed mm. for many, many years. It was silent there. there. There was just nothing from the Villa fans, but it was the total opposite from our fans there. So having got up at some stupid hour, travelled to, to Villa... Ran out of beer in the pub before <laughs> I was in. Yeah. So if we can't have a little bit of a sing song and celebrate at the end, then I couldn't care less what anybody else thinks. It was a, <laughs> it was a good win away from home. It was a potential banana skin, as is yeah. any away mm -hmm. Premier League fixture. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, after after a loss on uh, on the previous Wednesday, is exactly what we needed. You know, we could have turned up with with a sort of. Um, you know, the wrong attitude in that game. Well, we didn't. We turned up with the right attitude. Had a couple of changes, but which we never knew until about sort of um, off, you know, up past 11 in the morning with Martinelli and Ramsdale. But it didn't affect us. And, and we, we were the better team. We deserved to win. And I really could not care less what anybody else says about what our fans want to do uh, inside the stadium. It was great. And the atmosphere was absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. Do you think that played its part in the celebrations that uh, came afterwards from the players? Yeah, why not? They're part, they're, they know we're part of it as well. So mm -hmm. they, they all came over to a man, as did Mikel Arteta at the end, came yeah. over and uh, and it was great. You know, the, the weather was great. The result was what we wanted. And it, and it was just a real big plus getting those three points and keeping us that little bit of a buffer that we got before... Um, the next next round of games. I mean, you know, I know we've got two. This is ridiculous that we've got a two week break now, just as we're getting into the nitty gritty. But it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So we've got we've got you know Monday week until we play again. Well, we we might not be quite as far ahead as what we are now, but we'll have to wait and see. But no, I've, I've got no calms whatsoever about um, those celebrations, and and I'll do exactly the same thing at the next away game. I'll be honest with you, or home game. Yeah, I think I think. I think we've got to ramp it up even more now because we know that it's getting under people's skin. Uh, Steve, celebration police were out all weekend. They were out after the Wolves game with Ruben Neves. Um, Ashley Young was surprised that we were we were celebrating so much. Do you feel like Arsenal were over 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 egging it, or do you just think it's sour grapes from from all these other fans and and and, and clubs? 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's it, it's sour grapes. I mean, all, all that's going... I mean, this is football anyway. This, this, is an, this is an entertainment. And, you know, if you can't go after, a, you know, a week's work or, you know, after some very old shitty stuff that's happened during the week and go to a football match and you can't cheer on your team and, and then celebrate after a good performance, then... Then I don't know. I don't know what they want. And, and these players that are, are moaning, they do the same thing. You know, they're the they're, they're the worst ones of all that do that. The ones that you know, people like Neves and Young, and you know, you had you even had Steven Gerrard, didn't you? You you know, he was coming out moaning at the uh, poor um, BT reporter for asking the uh, wrong questions, and then Gerrard's got the cheek to come out. After the game, <clears throat> say Shaka, Shaka shouldn't be moaned him for being tackled. I mean, talk about hip- hypocrisy. Um, <clears throat> you know, you should have a look at yourself. But no, nah, I mean, you, you can go back to, you know, when when we won the league at, at White Hart Lane. You you can go back to when we won the league at Old Trafford, and those fans then they didn't moan about Arsenal, and they're two of our biggest rivals. And they and, and and they they thought yeah fair enough. What I think it is, what I think it is, is you've got these teams like your Wolves, your teams like your Aston Villas, and who thought they you know there was a bit above their stations. They thought oi, oi, we we can get above Arsenal now. They're not doing too well, and and now and now that's sort of all been blown out of proportion because now they've seen that Arsenal are back. You know they've gone to their grounds. You know, smash them all right. One nils, two ones. But look, let's face it, both Aston Villa and Wolves both didn't look like scoring. And yeah, I mean, with all that's going on in the world at the minute, if you can't celebrate a goal or, or a victory, then uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what, mate. Yeah, I, I think I think you've uh, you've you've got it. You've got it pretty pretty close to the, to the mark there, Steve, with regards to. Um, the teams before uh as steve just said there simon did you at the start of the season did you did you also hear the likes of villa fans everton fans uh, even our own fans saying one we wouldn't get anywhere near europe and two teams like everton and villa would potentially come above us this season and do you think yeah, that's well, playing into this as well yeah so what what i did hear an awful lot of after three games is is fans from 19 other clubs ridiculing us because we were bottom of the league with no goals and no points mm. so that that was back in august yeah so who, who's laughing now so we're not no, no arsenal fan was sitting there at the start of the season so we're going to win the league but mm. we, we, you know believe it or not we, we had some of our fans mentioning the r word back in august yeah well you know that that to me was was crazy but if, if you look at the form that we've we've been on since Game four onwards of this season, mm-hmm. our City and Liverpool, I would say it's, it's probably as good as anybody's, if not mm-hmm. as certainly. We, we must be third, I would say, because we're not nine points behind Chelsea. So ultimately, mm-hmm. we've hit the ground running. So, you know, I, I, I couldn't care. I, I'll have constructive discussions with any fans, whether it's Arsenal fans or fans of other other clubs. But, you know, I could. who cares what Ashley Young's got to say? Ashley Young is, pro- is probably worried because he had such a torrid afternoon trying to mark Saka, who basically strolled round him with ease for most mm. of the game. Um, but as far as the fans are concerned, I couldn't care less. As I say, was it not the Villa fans that were mocking uh, ES, uh, ML Smith Rowe when he re-signed for us, saying, "Oh, he could have go- he could have gone on a great project that's going places at Villa in the uh, uh, next year." We also had the um, Buendi. Um, transfer, didn't we? And we even had Arsenal fans who wanted it. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even didn't even know he was playing at the weekend. He was that anonymous. So once again, you know, we 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 go way overboard as our fans do when any name gets mentioned. Yeah. in, and basically this this was a midfielder from the Championship last season who who really hasn't done a lot as he this season when he when he's um uh, when when he's playing for Villa. So mm-hmm. no. Lap it up. Let let them. You know, don't get me wrong. We might lose a few games. You know, they might laugh at us, but I couldn't care less. And they're certainly not going to spoil my day out when I'm going to football. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Steve, you don't care. Not not fussed. 
enjoying it, enjoying this, <laughs> it riling up these other fans, surely. Yeah, love it. You've got to, you know, it's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, the trouble, the trouble is, kid, what you've got now, you've got the snow, like the snowflakey, wokey football fans. <laughs> haven't you? You have, they're there. They're, they're out there. They're, they're the ones behind the, behind the face that you never see. They're the peanut things that you see that you say they're hiding in facebook and they, they never come out they're the ones that the keyboard warriors you know th these are these people because you know when, I, when we talk and you talk to even other fans of other teams who you, you know know what they're talking about they, they're saying God, yeah I'll, I'll be doing the same I'll, I'll be celebrating but you know and it doesn't help when you've got professional footballers coming out i mean that's sad is it I mean, all right, after a game, you know, talk to your mates in the dressing room, Ashley Young, and say to your, say to your team, God, look at that lot out there, oh, ain't it? Don't come out on the on the pitch and make yourself look like a plank, you know, and and start talking to the world because that's what that's what you're making yourself look like. But yeah, you know, just celebrate, you know, celebrate when we lose. Just keep keep on keep on celebrating, and why not? You know, you've already said it. You know, we was at the bottom of the league and we was, ah, oh, we was, we was in a dire, you know, situation. We just, we couldn't score goals and, and then all of a sudden we've just, you know, out of, out of nowhere, every single sort of aspect of the pitch, whether it's left back, centre backs, midfield, forwards, everything's working. What do they want us to do? You know, just go, hey, we won. You know what, like, no, like the old World War Two. You know, the old... Yeah. You can't, you can't each other hand. Good luck. Good old. Good chance. <laughs> or, 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 or what do they want us to be like? Do they want us to be like the tennis fans who, you know, clap every, anything that happens? Oh, yeah, brilliant. Even the one they want to lose. Oh, great. No, 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 mate. Just, you know, long, long may it continue. Long may us, you know, celebrate. And hopefully we'll be celebrating to the end of the season and, um, you know, beyond that. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I'm I'm all in for that. Coletso says, I hope Mikel Arteta starts doing backflips after winning. Johnny says, I really don't care what people are saying about us celebrating. As long as we're celebrating, I don't give a crap. Coletso says, Mikel better do the moonwalk at the press conferences. If he does, I mean, he's going to go down in Arsenal history. Uh, right. There's always been always been Arsenal haters. Why are we surprised? Yeah, exactly, exactly. We, we, we know the coup. We know it's going to go down. When when we're doing bad, they want to slander us. When we're doing well, they want to slander us. They 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 don't want us. They don't want us to. They don't want us to be happy. And all this talk about yeah, you can celebrate at the end of the season. I guarantee, if we get top four, they will be saying, "Why are you celebrating like you've won the yeah. Champions League?" It's still it will always continue. So enjoy it while it's happening. Yeah. Just I'm coming, I'm coming on here in fancy dress if we finish fourth. I, t I tell you what, I tell you what, I said I was unbearable before. Yeah, I, I don't want to be liked. I'm not interested in being liked. If it means Arsenal being better, I am i don't care about being liked. I was unbearable before. You do not want to see me when we're back in the Champions League and we start getting back up to the top. You don't want me about. So, so yeah. All right, all right. So, first of all, let, let, let's, let's talk, let's discuss the, the Liverpool game. We we, we, uh, we haven't had a discuss to uh, go really in depth about it. Um, Steve, f first half against Liverpool, um, really good first half, very encouraging. Um, overall, not enough, but but yeah. signs, signs of good things to come. We've taken on a Liverpool team um, doing so well at the moment. Yeah, but very, like, very good signs. Like you, you've already said, you know, the, the first half, I, I thought we was excellent. And, uh, you know, it's just the, the second half, you know, what, what happened then was, you know, Liverpool, you know, Liverpool showed us what we want to become. Uh, and that it didn't surprise me, to be honest with you. But we, we was excellent in, in that first half. And when we come on afterwards and we, and we did the post-match, it was... It was a little bit. I was a little. I was a little bit upset. I was a little bit gutted. You know, it was similar to the Man City game. Very, very, very similar. Where you think, mm, on another day we could have got something out of that. Mm. Now, that's a long time since we've been able to say that, and that that's how close we are now. You know, we we're playing teams like Liverpool, and Man City. We're beating everybody we're supposed to beat. You know, all right, picking up your draw. We're beating everybody we're supposed to beat. 
the next step is beating the Liverpools, and we beat them in that first half. You know, we we went out there, but I just thought second half they just, you know, Liverpool sort of showed their class. They showed why they're title winners. They showed why they're, you know, they 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 win the European Cup, and you know, they they might do both again this year. And um, you know, and and, and it was a little bit men versus boys, really. You know, we've got a lot of youngsters. And, and Liverpool are, are the ready-made article. Uh, and we're just not the ready-made article yet. And, and that ain't a bad thing. So if you can come away from that game and, and have that kind of, that, you know, that thought process, then, uh, yeah, it was fine. I, I wasn't disappointed from, from it. And, uh, yeah, it, I'm, I'm sure next season I can't wait to take them on again. Yeah, de- definitely, definitely. Uh, so what, what, what do you think the differences between the teams were in the Liverpool well, game? I'll be honest, they, you know, given their due, they took their chances, but they, they were two soft goals, weren't they? The first one was a soft goal, and even the second one, you know, we sort of made a bit of a cock up, really, where we could have got, got rid of the ball. But I don't honestly think there was too much in it uh, that night. You know, when you look at it, I, I thought we shaded the first half. There, there weren't too many. Um, clear-cut chances for either side in, in the first half. But certainly possession-wise, I thought, thought we were as good as them. So, um, you know, if we'd have got a point from that game, I'd, I'd have been over the moon, really. But, you know, fair dues. They, they took their chances when they came. And, um, you know, they, they took the spoils on the night. But, um, you know, we haven't got to play them anymore. And we haven't got to play City. And obviously, it looks like if you're playing those teams, then that league position is going right until the end of the season. So, ultimately, um, they're not going to ease off on any games or anything like that. So, should we have got something on the night? I think if, if, if we'd have got something on the night in the long run, obviously, you know, if we'd have got a point from it in the long run, it would have been huge for us. But it wasn't. But from what I saw, again, but I was there at the City game. I wasn't at the Liverpool game. And both those games... We stood toe to toe at home against the best teams in our league. So you got to look 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 at that with a positive going forward. I think. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And 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 was there a, a slight worry that there'd be a hangover from that game? Definitely, and and not only a hangover as in like we've lost, but maybe physically as well. But I didn't see any drop off at all. So um, I think you know the, the, as a, as what I said at the start, I thought it was a potential banana skin the Villa game. Mm-hmm because of what happened against Liverpool. But fortunately, they, they'd obviously raised that totally from the memory and started afresh. So, as I say, we're on the countdown now, aren't we? There's, there's 10 games to go. Um, it is still in our hands. Um, I'll be honest with you, I probably think that we're going to need a little bit of help from somebody mm. else. Yeah. Um, but, you know, let, let's see. We can only go one game at a time. But... Um, so big, big ten games coming up. Huge ten games. Yeah, it's, it's a big, it's a massive ten games. I think, as you said, um, I think no matter how Arsenal, how well Arsenal are doing, um, it's going to take a lot for us to to go through this and, and get full spot. And I think it potentially might even be uh, the majority of these games are going to have to be wins. Uh, I'm going to have to drop very few little points because the the well, run that the the the, the, the the spuds down the road have got uh, seems a lot easier. Yeah. Than well, I, I wrote down, I, I, I've got it here that if, if Spurs win every single game, they get on to 78 points. Yeah. Now, the most we can get is 84 if we win every game. But obviously, if they beat us, then, then basically we can, we can only get to 81. So we, we would need, like, if, if we lost to Spurs, we'd need 25 points if they won every single game. So, you know, you're only looking at, one, you know, eight wins and one draw. So I mean, that sounds a tall order to me. But You're, uh, you're talking about Premier League points that in, in the past would have won you the league. Like, <laughs> 82 points would have won you the league previously. And we're talking about that to get top four. That, that shows the level of not just the league, but the level that Arsenal have risen this this season, Steve. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, not, none of us thought that you know we was going to be in this situation. We, we, we've said it many a times. I mean, at the beginning of the season, you know, we we was looking at 
you know, we were bottom of the league at one point, and um, but all right, we didn't think we was going to stay there, but you know, we, we wasn't we wasn't scoring goals, uh, and we didn't know where they was going to come from. Um, but we, we've got to think. I mean, Mikel Arteta has, has has just done at something just you know incredible with the with this bunch of young players and um, well and the old, the older players as well because they've seemed to have stepped up a you know a, you know a level as well. But um, yeah, I mean at the beginning of the season, I mean we would have never have you know taken this, but. Now, now we're sitting in fourth, and we're thinking, okay, we've got Spurs, we've got Manchester United. Can can we get can we get past them? The only thing I worry about is, have we peaked too early? You know, when you get a peak, you know, when you when you get on a run of like ten eight games, we've been, we've we've played a lot of games now. We're we're playing fantastic. Oh, we is there going to be a point because we haven't got a big squad? Is there going to be a point? That's what worries me. Is there going to be a point where it's going to be a drop off? Is there going to be a point where we may get a couple of injuries? Uh, these, these, these are what's wor- worrying me, and um, yeah, but it is in their own hands. They've surprised us right from the right from the from months ago when they were sitting at the bottom of the table. Mm-hmm. I think they can, you know, surprise us again. We've got an incredible bunch of players there, especially an incredible bunch, you know, of, of an eleven who just seem to have, you know, gelled together overnight, if you like. And uh, the, the only worry I've got, Kieran, is is the squad. I worry about an injury and, and what would happen if a certain player, oh, we've got a couple of players injured, you know, would be in trouble. You know, will will a couple of the older players, you know, start start to tire off? You know, we we see Lacazette on the weekend. He looked tired. You mm-hmm. know, he, he may come back against Crystal Palace. He may smash it. But me and you were speaking, Kieran, and you know, we were a little bit worried about him um, against. Um, Against against Villa because he looked very tired and you know and all we've got to bring on is Nketiah who actually if anything he actually looked worse than Nketiah when he came on he, he was awful so we are short if I've got a worry it's that the squad but saying that you know <clears throat> people like Cedric people like Holding Pepe will not to a degree, Pepe this weekend because he didn't do very well this weekend. But you know, you know, there there are players there who can come in if if a centre back gets injured or a right back gets injured. Uh, midfield would be a problem. Centre forward would be a problem. So yeah, it's just a matter of fingers crossed. Yeah, I, I think I think Sam brought it up a, a few weeks back um, with regards to the um, have we peaked too early. I, I don't think that's the case because this, this form's been essentially from January last year. Um, we had the best, we were, the, I think, the best team in the league um, in the second half of the season last year. It sounds like a rubbish stat, but when you continue it on to this year, it's only the first three games of the season. And as you said yourself, Steve, we're, or Simon, we, we, we're just behind Chelsea. Um, and, and the only team that's been better than us in, in the run of games is Liverpool Man City. So I, I, I can't say that I worry about a drop-off because we lost to Liverpool, we came back against Villa. We dropped to, dropped to, uh, off in two games against uh, Man United and Everton and, and a lot a lot of people would have thought, oh, this is the point where it could, could implode. We came back and went on another massive run. So, yeah, th- that doesn't worry me. Um, I hear what you're saying with regards to the squad. I think we've just been very lucky yeah. with the likes of everyone is going to have an off day. Lacazette had an off day. We've now got two weeks off for him to rest. And I feel like the off day was because of because he was tired. Like he's, We've seen that he's added a few extra pounds. He's not getting any younger. And it's, it is that part time of his career when he does need to probably have a game out here and there. He's just not got the action option at the moment. Um, whether he's going to play the likes of Martinelli or Pepe in that number nine position, who knows? Um, it seems like he's he's sticking with his, his man Lacazette at the moment. Um, so yeah, we, we we got away with it. Um, and it's really important, is he? Like Lacazette, isn't he? Very important because I, I think what what 
what a lot of our fans, a lot of people out there seem to forget is Martinelli and Saka, they are forwards. They're not, they're not midfielders. Like we wouldn't call uh, Salah and Mane midfielders because they're not, they're forwards. And the fact that the, the, uh, Emil Smith Rowe and Saka are our top goal scorers is it, good. That's a good thing that, that our young forwards are, are our top goal scorers. We just would like more goals from them and from other areas, especially our centre forward. But as I said before, Lacazette's goal ratio in contributions has been two in one. So I think it's 21 goals, at 11 goal contributions. So we would like to see more goals because he's a striker. But if he's adding assists that lead to goals, then for, I don't care. Um, it's part of his game. We saw Firmino scored about eight goals in 45 games a few seasons ago, but was lauded as one of the best number 10s in the world. Lacazette's far from that, but he's doing a job which is, is similar to what Firmino's doing. So while he's continuing to do that and, and, and give us assists and give Saka and Martinelli assists, I'm happy. I'm happy. It's just if, it, if that starts to drop off, that's when there's a big problem. And I think we'll see that in our performances as well. Um, so yeah, yeah um, you can see, you can see that 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 week is looming in mid-April, where where it's we got Southampton, Chelsea, and United in a week. Mm. Uh, that, that, that to me is sort of um, yeah. I'm not I'm not saying there won't be won't be a result or two, not just with us, but with other clubs that will change the picture of things. But already that's looking like you know the the, the crunch time, which is basically mm. going to sort out who's where going into the last two or three games. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's, I, think, let's I think, you know, we, when we've, we've played, um, we've played Man City, we've played Liverpool, we, we've seen, we've seen how we, you know, how we've performed against those two sides. Probably, you know, if not the two best sides in the Premiership, possibly the one, two best sides in, 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 in Europe as well. So we know our team can go out there and play like that, not only against those sides, but the team below them. So, there's, 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 there's obviously a pattern that they've got used to and to the fact where whoever they line up against, whoever they play, they, they've got no fear. They don't care who it is, right? They'll just go out there and play the way they know. And, yeah, I mean, look, Liverpool Men's Men's City, as I said like, a little while ago, on another day, you know, we, we, we could have done then. So the point is, because we're going on, when we do play the Chelsea's, when we do play the Tottenham, when we do play... The Manchester United, as fans, we've got to go into them games and think, well, these boys have just got no fear. They'll go out there again. Look at how they played against Liverpool. Look how they played against Man City. You know, they'll, they'll go out there not, not caring who they are. And maybe we'll be a bit more lucky at this time. You know, maybe we'll get a goal or a couple of goals because that's all it was against Liverpool and Man City. So, yeah, I'm. You know, I'm actually more confident now than what, probably what I was last season or, you know, at the beginning of the season. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and that's that's because of the way that Arsenal are playing and the results they keep on plugging on with. Um, let's have a look a little look at the league table. Um, currently sitting, what, five points behind Chelsea on the same points. We are f three points ahead of Tottenham with a game in hand. Um, and next game's against Crystal Palace. Theirs is against Newcastle. Newcastle in good form at the moment, so could hopefully do us a favour there and take some points off of Tottenham. But Crystal Palace is a tough game, um, one that I never like to, whether it's Crystal Palace home or away, that they're our bogey team, and especially under the likes of uh, Patrick Vieira. It's going to be a tough one, eh, Simon? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, You've seen the last few weeks they got they got um, a draw at home to City and then obviously destroyed Everton at the, at the weekend. But you know they, they play, you know they, they're not going to sit there and put men behind the ball. Crystal Palace they're going to make it an open game, which in theory plays into our hands a little bit more. I always think we play better when people are trying to play football rather than when they're you know we're trying you know like Burnley at home the other week when we were trying to break down eleven um, behind the ball. But it's not an easy fixture. Um, very hostile place to go. Crowd are uh, heavily involved from the first minute there, and uh, they're on a good break. You know, they've got nothing to lose. They're, they're not. Um, they're not going to go down. They're probably not going to get a European spot. So it, it's. You could argue it's a free hit for them. But um, it's on the box Monday night under the lights. It'll be. So 
will be a very, very tough game. If we can get three points there, that is huge in our uh, in our quest to get that fourth spot. Huge. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Steve, uh, the game against Crystal Palace, we win that one, seeing more, more scenes like you, you we did at um, Villa Park. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can see um, Paddy doing us a favour, you know, putting putting a couple of his players on the bench, you know, maybe a couple of his best players. Uh, I'm <laughs> about it, it he wants that uh, Arsenal job. There's no way he's doing that. <laughs> you might, but yeah, I mean, Simon said it there. You know, Palace, very, very tough, very, very, very hostile place to go. A team that I always like when I see them playing on on the TV or they're on, I you know I always make a point to watch them because they play they play very good football. Um, but the thing is, what they can't do they they, they can't defend. They can't they, they can't they're a little bit better under the air and that. But um, you know, and, and Simon's already said it. They come at us and you know we'll we'll, we'll destroy them. I fancy Arsenal destroying any team uh, at, at this moment in time. You know we've got that. You know that 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 bank of the midfield players of Xhaka and Party there, who, who, and Odegaard, who, who you know are just you know on fire at the moment, or, you know on form, and up the top there you got Saka on one side, or Martinelli, and El- you know if you're coming up against them, you're 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 frightened, and if you're going to Crystal Palace, you're fan you're fancying yourself, and uh, yeah, I mean if only we could, if we could just stay keep that. You know that team fit, and uh, it's hopefully they all come back. You know, with no no knocks from the from the international breaks, and uh, yeah, I, I, you got to fancy us against against Palace. You know, you lose you lose against Palace, then you know you probably don't. You know, I see. I'd say they probably are saying saying you don't deserve to get in the Champions League, but you know that Palace is an our game. It's one one of it. It's, it's one where you can slip up, and yeah. uh, we've we got to you know we've got to be on our guard. Yeah, no, definitely, fully agree. Um, it, it, it is one we've got to sip up, but th- these these are the, these are the these are the tests, as they will call them. It's the games where you you should be winning. It's going to be away from home Monday night. Everything there it's just rings against us. Um, right. I've been to Palace. I was quite a regular at Palace, um, and and as as Simon says, the atmosphere is it's as close as you can get to the the sort of hostile atmospheres that you might get in Europe. They're banging on the walls, the ground shaking. It's an old ground as well. You can feel it rumbling. Those fans, those ultra-like fans, oh, they are very old school. They are. They're, 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 they're different. So, um, so yeah, it'll be a, a, a tough game. Uh, and and they've always got the likes of of uh, Z- Wilfred Zaha that always wants to impress against Arsenal as well to show us what he's missing. So, um, Arsenal need to be on their top form t- uh, for that game and, and to get those three points. He's building a good squad there. So, you know, you know, all of a sudden a couple of players. Said, Who's the young guy that uh, that Arteta has been looking at? The young. Yeah, there's young... Ma- Michael Onze or something yeah, that's, like that. That's him, yeah, like good player. They got him from from Reading. Uh, really yeah. good player. Arsenal were looking at him when he was in the Championship. Yeah, really, really good player. Don't don't forget don't forget as well. That's our catch-up game. We're playing last that weekend, so we may have people breathing down our neck by the time yes. we go. So the reverse of what happened last weekend when Spurs were playing after us. So yes, that, that weekend is going to be. I think that's a very very tough fixture. I'll be honest. Yeah, with you. and 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 with, with good though. Spurs are looking good. You know, I mean, they're looking that good. That all you know, the Tottenham fans that I'm talking to, they're even praising Eric Dyer. They're saying that Conte's changed Eric Dyer into this top class centre back, and I'm like, what? Where's that? Where's that come from? But they all say it, and you know, Kulovetsky's coming. We know about Kulovetsky. We we wanted him. Uh, the guy in the midfield, that Benton Kerr as well, and Kane's it in form. So yeah, it's it's, it's going to be tough, but I think our boys can do it. It's going to be tough. Uh, one one of the, the shining lights this season, and for the past three seasons, to be fair, he's uh, Bakayo Saka. Uh, Rumours that he's going to be potentially going up to earning 125 grand a week. Um, the, the, the kid's currently on, I think, 40 grand a week at the moment. Um, some would be sniffing at that. However, Arsenal are doing it the right way, I'd say. Um, Steve, fair for Saka to be uh, earning the, the, the 125 grand a week reported? Yeah, yeah, he's special. 
is is a very very special player. I remember a few years ago uh, an interview uh, in the tunnel. I don't know if it was at Ivory or at Emirates. I can't remember. That must have been the Emirates when uh, the report one of the reporters went up to him per Mertesacker and he said, "Who out of all your academy is is is, is someone we've got to look forward, you know, coming up in the future?" And, and without even like before he could finish the question, the you know the uh, you know, the touchline report, he went, back by Saka. And I was like, oh, who's this kid? Who's that? Oh, I haven't heard of him. I've heard of him now. Oh, you know, per, per Mertesacker knew about him. But, yeah, I mean, under the 25k a week, yeah, what you said, mate, you know, normally you, you would worry about that because you think that, oh, you know, it's a bit too much for a, for a player of his age. But I think Saka's got his head on his shoulders and he's it, one of them players. I'm sure Arsenal have thought about it. And, um, yeah, there's 125k to Saka and, and, and 125k to, say, another of player. So, but if we're talking about Saka, I mean, one of the most exciting players in the in the Premiership. I mean, he plays on that right side now and he's just getting better, you know, just game, game by game. I mean, every time I see him play, there's, there's three, three um, defenders on him and, uh, I, you know, he's not... He hasn't got a fault, and you know, and he's getting just better and better. And <laughs> as I said, he's, he's he's getting a good little partnership going with with Cedric. <laughs> I mean, at the moment for me, Cedric stays in, and Tommy Asu don't. But um, but Saka, he's he's got everything, isn't he? I mean, okay, it helps with Odegaard there. They're getting that partnership. You know, that always helps. But every time he gets the ball, he's just so confident. His confidence go round three players. His confidence pull it through their legs. He's got his head on his shoulders. Um, he, you know, he's, he's, you know, now in the England squad. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what's what's the what, how many years is it? They could think what they're going to time up for five. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be that. Yeah, they, 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 they signed him up uh, on a six-year deal two years ago, so it's down to four years. It'll yeah. probably be an extension. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's filling out now. You know, he's got yeah. that muscle on him now. You, you know, you can see, I see a picture of him a couple of years ago. He was very thin. Now he's got muscle on him. He's, he's being beefed out. And, uh, every, you know, every every single premiership club wants him. Every single European club would want him. So, you know, Arsenal have to pay him that money. They've got to pay because someone else will. And, um, yeah. I think, I think we'll have to pay more than that, I'll be honest with you. Because right, yeah. I, I think he's... Um, <coughs> If you look, I think Party's our top earner on two hundred thousand. Well, you, you could argue that Saka's yeah. probably the most influential player in the side, or certainly one of them. So yeah. I'd be surprised if if we didn't offer more than that to tie him down for, you know, probably give him another five years or something like that. But um, you know, we'll, we'll see. It, the, the important thing is getting him signed up, I think, and not yeah. just it. But the nucleus of those youngsters as well, getting them all signed up. But, um, yeah, it's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. There's no transfer fee. It's just paying the money he wants. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's no thought about this guy. The, the guy runs back and helps Cedric out. He, 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 he's like, a, he, he gives defenders a nightmare. Don't, whether you're a Liverpool player, whether you're, you, you know, that first half against, against Liverpool, um, you know, we we never see um, Robinson. He got he, he never get got down the other side. He was he was you know he had to deal with um, Saka all the time. And but yes, yeah, very 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 special. And um, I think I think he loves Arsenal. Uh, I think it'd take a lot for him to for him to leave. Um, you know, and, I mean, I see I see I see a thing today in in, in you know a little conversation in one of those space things on on Twitter, and they're all and everyone's talking about. Um, oh, Martin Elliott would be worth this if we sell him, so and so I'd be like, why, why are we always talking about selling our players? You know, oh, it was like an Arteta has made this player into this and there he's worth that, so if we sell him, just want to keep him, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. It'd be, uh, I mean, if you would like to see uh, Emirates Stadium on fire with a, an angry mob of Arsenal fans, then sell Saka. By all means, but um, I'm sure that is the last thing you want to be seeing. Um, Simon, what, what else does Saka need to 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 add to his game to really take him to? When we talk about 
you world superstars. We talk about Ballon d'Or nominees. What what does he need to do to to take his game to to that level? I would say keep keep progressing as he is. I mean, obviously he he scores goals, he, he sets goals up. So let let's let's wind the clock forward a little bit in the next season when I'm pretty sure that we're going to have a different main striker in the side. So to me, it's probably all about his relationship with what he can do with that individual as well as the, as well as the, the sort of that he's got got around him but um you know if you get if we get someone that that scores 20 goals a season up front and Saka sets up 12 of them or something like that and he's also feeding off him for other other games you you, you see a partnership like like the three that you've got at Liverpool up front and have had for like three years, if we can integrate somebody else into our forward line that has a similar sort of effect for us, that makes them fearsome, doesn't it? But you've already heard managers like Klopp praising Saka. I'm sure, you know, like Steve says, any manager would, would want him in the side in the Premier mm. League. And mm. you're not telling me foreign sides have not looked at him. So they've already seen that this lad's, this lad's the real deal. And um, and he'll be good, but I mean, he, you know, he was only up against Ashley Young, and I don't really classify Ashley Young as a defender at the weekend. He was he was in that position because someone got injured before kickoff or wasn't available. But he absolutely roasted him all afternoon. And I, I've been to umpteen games this season where he, there's a bit of a buzz when he gets the ball on that right hand side, especially at the Emirates when he finds the space and he gets the yeah. ball. You can tell there's a buzz in the crowd when he when it gets to his feet, and he's looking at running at players, and, and I like that. I like these. Do you think players. he feeds off of that as well? Yeah, definitely. It's a two way process, but mm. but he not you know he, he hugs that touchline on the right hand side, and he waits for the ball, and when he gets it, he just straight away starts going in at goal, and and you you can see that the defenders there are thinking, oh, you know, one slip here and he's round me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to me, he just needs to keep doing what he's doing. And if we can get someone else with him up front or maybe another two, I think it, it, it'll, it'll improve him as well. Yeah. I, agree with Simon. I agree with Simon. And I think it's so important, the type of striker that now comes in. So, that it, you know, so our, which will make our Odegaards, which will make our Sackers, which will make our Martinelli's, you know, progress. You know, we don't want one of these strikers who... Who maybe it's sort of like who wants the ball all the time, you know? Someone, for instance, so say if you had an Aguero type striker, yeah, someone, you know, you need some a striker who's willing to do what Lacazette does, be six years younger, yeah? yeah, and able to maybe get like Simon says about ten, say ten, twelve, fifteen goals, because we don't want to take away the goals from Odegaard, Martinelli, Saka. So it's so important. You know the type of striker we get in there before, which was talking about the is that the um, you know you know the type all these all these type of people um, Dominic Calvert Lewin who to be honest with you I don't really want now. Um, for me, I think we need someone who holds the ball up, who, who can just who, who Saka can play in, can Martinelli can play in, so ODR can play in, but all those can still. Get their do their stuff and score their goals. For me, I I, I really think Ivan Tony would be the type of striker that, that Arsenal would would be great. Big, big, strong, someone who can hold the ball up, play the ball off, and get a lot of goals um, rather than the quick nippy one. Because we've got plenty of them there, but we'll see. Yeah, we will see. Um, yeah. So an, another another person who's looking to potentially get a new deal. Is uh, there's talk of Mikel Arteta getting a three year extension on his current deal? Um, Simon, it, would you be happy with giving Mikel Arteta an extension now? Some people are saying wait till the end of the season to see where we finish in the league. No, for me, I'm uh, I'm more than happy to see more of the same because I think from what he inherited two and a half years ago, or just under two and a half years ago, to where we are now, to where he can take us with a a couple more players in that side I'm not looking at a change of manager whatsoever and if you'd have been in that stadium at the weekend there were 3,000 plus Arsenal fans and every single one of them would have said the same thing as what I've just said as well mm -hmm. all the negativity 
only comes from like idiots on social media and stuff like that. Yeah. If you're there at the games, there is 100% backing and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, you've got too many people listening to like the, the odd fool on Twitter who, 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 you know, a faceless account that thinks he knows everything and stuff like that. Doesn't yeah. go to games or anything like that. But if you can't see the changes that have happened in the last two and a half years, and if you can't see the type of st or style of play that he's looking at playing, once he gets the players in, we couldn't do that with the players that we had initially. He couldn't play that type of game. But he's mm -hmm. obviously looked at it and said, right, I need to get rid of these players. I need to bring in this type of player, blah, blah, blah. Well, that doesn't happen overnight, does it? And, and here we are now sit, talking about top four discussion anyway. So no, nobody gave us a chance of top four at the start of the season. So mm -hmm. we're exceeding, really, where, where we thought we'd be. But... I'd, I'd have no hesitation in giving him another uh, three, four-year contract. Let let him let him complete what he wants to, and let him start. He's he's. All I'll say is that I know someone who's who's very close on the coaching staff at Arsenal, and his feedback to me was, he's the best he's worked with, and this is a person that's played or, or has been in a lot of jobs at a lot of clubs, and he says he's absolutely meticulous, but he pushes. Yeah is very hard yeah but glowing reference glowing reference yeah yeah that's 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 good to hear and i mean it's one thing that i spotted because when i when he first come in i was probably a bit a bit like sort of stalkerish because i was watching the arsenal training videos on repeat and seeing like the little things like when he walked into the room and he was asking about the drone footage and, and stuff like that and watching the different camera angles from on the ground and in the air. And then to the point when, to the point when um, uh, he, the, the, the Lacazette was asking if they can do flicks around the corners and he's like, no, you keep it simple the way you're facing. And that wasn't to say he wanted to sort of stifle people's creativity he wanted to take it back to basics and make sure that they're getting the basics right because that's one thing that i was noticing that with arsenal is the comparison between the Wenger era era with with the passing which was slick 100 percent all the time to where it got to by the time um Mikel Arteta, it was horrible to watch the sloppiness of the passes even in training videos you're seeing bubble passes to players and that that if you can't do a five-yard pass to a player without it bobbling, then you, you, you've lost. You've lost where, where where you need to be with, with, with this football team. And he's taking it back to basics. And and the, the, the what he's done with the club has been brilliant. He's he's had criticism from the start, and he still gets it now. But he just brushes it off, and he keeps on going. Um, and the players have been an absolute testament to to what he has done and and his mindset. Um, because yeah. What what people were calling arrogance from what they were seeing behind uh, a TV screen thousands of miles away is actually his confidence and self belief, which is instilled into his team as well. And I, I'll take that all day long. I will take his arrogance because it's not. Um, Steve, three year deal. Happy to happy to give that to Mikel Arteta. Yeah, three, four, five, ten. <laughs> give him, give him whatever, whatever. Um... He's the, he's the best young manager, well, top three best best manager, young managers in in Europe in the, in in the subject. So, you know, Simon's already said there that you still get these people who who, who are trying to say, oh, you know, don't give them a contract, and you know, and you know, and if what if we don't, you know, if you don't finish fourth, you know, then we've got to look at it again. If it, if you don't finish fourth, well, that doesn't matter. It, it, it don't matter if we don't finish fourth. You know, we, we, this, what this guy has done, he came into this club as a, as, as a total mess. It was a mess. It was a mess. He's changed everything. You know, on the pitch, inside the pitch, he's got the upstairs right. He's got, you know, the, the culture right on the pitch. Uh, he, he, the young players adore him. And, uh, yeah, and, and he's just got all those traits that Pep's got. And I love him. I, I just, you know, I, I, I just love him. You know, I, I could watch him just... You know, on on the touchline for the whole game, just you know, watching his mannerisms and you know the way he just moves his hands, he's just you know, something else. I mean, and look, I mean, he came into the club as a mess. This this lot, it was a mess, and he has 
built a whole new defence with players that were scoffed at and said, why the hell was he buying them? He's brought in a goalkeeper who people laughed at and said, why, why are you buying this guy? Well, Arteta obviously knows about more than these people, you know, do. Um, and, then, and then he's got a midfield, you know, which is, for me, I, I'm, I'm going to say it. I think them two together are probably one of the two best pairs, not, not players, but pairs in, in, in the Premiership. Um, the understanding they got, but that's all come from Arteta. And, you know, the what what can you say that, that's wrong about him? I mean, he's, he's incredible. You know, we go back to when, you know, he was at City and, you know, we, was, we heard about, you know, when he flew over to Man City because De Bruyne had this or Sterling had an injury and, you know, and they all said that if it wasn't, if it wasn't for, for Mikel Arteta, then, you know, we wouldn't be the players we are today. Um, you know, I mean, but our club, he's just, he's brought, he's brought back our club. He's brought it back. And to anybody out there who thinks that he shouldn't get a contract, then I, I just don't know what to say to him. It's just, it's just, it's just laughable what, how they couldn't think that this man, you know, shouldn't get a new, a new contract. Mm -hmm. So, what, what would you say is is the the most important thing that that Mikel Arteta has changed in the club? Uh, I think he's he's certainly got a, a unified um, team there now, and he, you, you've only got. You know, let's be honest, he, he weeded out people. Bamiyang's probably the, the the last one to go. Ozil was the big name before that, but but he's basically looked, and he he's obviously said, well. Unless everybody's batting from the same wicket, this isn't going to work, is it? So whatever his philosophy is, everybody needs to buy into that. And he's only interested in taking taking people on a journey if they're buying into that. So to me, all the people that have gone, yeah, so the troublemakers, the Gendouzis and uh, the, the Bamiyangs, the Ozils and stuff, you're not, you're not going to buy into this, so you're gone as far as he's concerned. So he's very headstrong, yeah. But he, he's got a clear idea of what he wants to do, and if you're not not on board, then he's not he's not going to have you running alongside, is he? Simple as that. So he will just go and find another player that is willing to to, to play along with that. And and you have to say that's probably a very very similar philosophy to what Guardiola's got going on, and Klopp, I would say, at City and Liverpool. If you, you remember that, um, it was the guy at Man City, was it Sane that was there? Great player mm. at the time, wasn't he? Yeah, they were Sane. Yeah, when, was, started messing around a bit, gone, straight away. Yeah. Go, go back to Alex Ferguson when he was at United, yeah? Yap Stam, yeah? Started messing around, gone. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter if you're a top player, they just said, mm. troublemaker, gone. And I, I think that's that's what he's doing. So he, he's got, you know, he's a very young squad we've got, youngest one in the Premier League. But these lads, every time they're interviewed, and it, you could see that on Saturday after the game, it is one unified team. What mm. they've done with Leno at the end. So this this guy had not played since yeah. Man City, was it, or Chelsea, whatever, the, the, the 5 0 loss at Man City. Not played a game since in the league. Came in. Kept a clean sheet. As soon as that final whistle went, they all went to him, including Ramsdale. Yeah, yeah. He was there watching. So the fact that Ramsdale was on the bench, he was injured. Correct. Like he, could, he could have been at home. Could have been. In, no, he wanted to be pitch side. That's, that's exactly right. He said he wanted to travel because he feels part of part of the team, and the whole lot came on. So you could see at the end, and that that's mm -hmm. part of the whole ethos of why everybody's celebrating because it's not just like one person who scored a hat trick. It's me, me, me. It's like, no, this is a team philosophy and this is a team game and you're only going to win things along that line. Yeah, no, I fully agree. Steve, what would you say the most important thing that, that um, Mikel Arteta has changed or brought to, to Arsenal since he's come? Cool. Well, that's, that's a tough one because he's, he's just brought, you know, he's brought so, so many things in. Uh, I questioned him a little while ago uh, about the, you know, the Abemiang thing, whether we did it right, whether we did it wrong. Um, but uh, I think at the end of the day, it was good for both people, you know, in the end. But I think the most important thing to me, what he's done, OK, look, he's, he's, we know what he's done on the pitch. We 
know what he's done behind the scenes. We we know that that's fair givens, right? But I think we we really got to take a good look now of that how he's brought our Arsenal back, how he's brought the culture back, how he, people are going to the games now, and people are loving it. We were talking about earlier on, you know, how how we're celebrating, you know, the the wins, you know, the the goals. Um, it's just I think. He's had a big say behind the scenes in, in what what he wants to happen, and and I think they've given him that that little bit of leeway to do it. I I, I think that having I think he's very good with young players. I think you know he's he's very good with them, and I think the his, his management with them has been excellent. But I do think that the most important thing that he's done is that to me, you know, now is that. He's got rid of that. That firstly, he's got rid of that soft underbelly. Secondly, he's just got rid of. He's got rid of the troublemakers. I think that that is massive. He's got rid of that trouble. The troublemakers. If the troublemakers were still there, if they were still sitting there, if we still had a, an Emery or maybe another manager, you know, if they were still sitting there, I don't think we'd be in the position we are today. So the fact that he's got rid of the troublemakers and some of the players, which just wasn't good enough for Arsenal. And he spent a whole season, you know, you know, not getting the players he wanted because he really did it. Not last, he did it the season four when you know we really didn't have, he didn't really have nothing to spend. You know, he spent the whole time getting, you know, getting players out, and you know, uh, Arsenal were a little, a little bit, you know, coated off a little bit because, you know, they wasn't, they, they were saying, oh, we ain't bought none, we ain't bought no one. But you know, I think people got to like take a step back now. And look what he was doing that season. He was getting, you know, your Grandus, your Kalasinats and your Staffies and, you, you know, we, we know the Ozzels and Sabalioses and, oh, you know, we can just go on and on and on and on, the Williams. You know, it must have been incredibly hard work to do that. And, and because he's done that, that's why we're sitting forth today, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, no, he's, he, he's, he's done a lot uh, for Arsenal. Um the, the culture change uh, among the players, the culture change among the fans has been massive. Um, and you can see it, you, you saw it on Saturday. Um, there's there's no sort of, it feels like, like I, 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 I could imagine a few years back, if we brought on Eddie, the crowd's going, Ooh, and Eddie knows. Eddie will feel that and be like, you know, what's the point? In, what's the point? Whereas, even if Eddie's coming on now, there's an atmosphere like, come on, you can do it. Get a goal. Yeah, do what you've got, yeah. you got to do. It. It, every, it feels like everyone is behind everyone, no matter who's coming on, no matter whether you've got your favourite players or whatever. People are loving the players that they hated last year. Um, and, and and it's been brilliant. Like, like what, what he's done with the, the youngsters has been excellent. The, the Being able to bring out the, the best in um, Thomas Party. Uh, Granite Xhaka has just played the best I've seen him play in an Arsenal shirt under, under Mikel Arteta. Um, and Martin Odegaard has been an absolute phenomenon as well. Um, he, his bars, he's, I don't know, it's glass ceiling. He's, he, he, he's a Galactico that got let, let go too soon. Um, and Real Madrid are going to absolutely feel that. And I feel like he's a long-term Arsenal player as well because he's been there, he's worn the T-shirt of Real Madrid, there's nothing new there. He ain't going to Barcelona. Who else is there? Unless there's a massive fallout with Arsenal, I think we've got ourselves a superstar in the making. Um, and that will work well with the likes of Saka as well. Um, Martinelli, we've seen the connection um, that, that, that Odegaard and Party have and Odegaard and Saka have. Um, and that's, that's frightening exciting. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see what, what, what I mean, as well as, well as so. that he's, he's brought out the good in as you said like players used to come on they used to get boo oh god but what about the players like Cedric now you know what about players like Rob Holding who yeah. you know you would be frightened of playing in that centre back position but now he comes on and we're like oh great it's Holding it's sweet yeah well now it's now, now it's like Holding's coming on Oh, the game's shored up. We're bringing on holding to shore up the game, to close it off, to shut it out. And now 
he's not silly. He will hear those things. And that, that adds an element of there's there's everyone in the squad is doing their bit. It's not like, oh, I'm sitting on the bench. Oh, I'm unhappy. Because you've got to have a big squad. This is how you, you've got to keep these players happy. Because like like Liverpool have got a plethora of good players in this in their starting eleven. But they've also got some quality players who could be in any of these top four teams in in their squad as well. And to keep them happy, they've got to make sure that they bring them on every game. They make sure that that it's, they've they've got an instruction when they bring them on. Minamino, how many how many goals has he scored that he's coming as a sub for for Liverpool? Now he's a player that went straight out on loan to Southampton, had a really good time at Southampton, and could have just left Liverpool. But now he's a, like a super sub who comes on in every game and then scores a goal to finish him off. Divock Origi, Champions League winner. And he, Klopp is getting the best out of him for when he comes on as well. So, and, and they're still bringing in players like Jota and Diaz. And they're still, uh, Origi will they'll still be able to get a, a tune out of Origi as well. So, and that's what Arteta mm-hmm. is doing uh, and, and making sure that everyone in the squad mm-hmm. feels their worth. Um, Simon, would you be happy if we didn't finish fourth still? If we didn't, well, I wouldn't say happy because I'm. Oh, you know, I think, I think it's good, but I mean, I think if we do, it's probably, it's probably overestimating where we thought we'd finish at the start of the season. But obviously, we're in pole position, so I'd be disappointed if if we weren't knocking on the door with a game to go. Mm, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I think it's going to go down to the wire as well. Um, so we will see. Um, I'm sure I'll be doing a, a, a watch along for them final few games as well. Um, thank you, everyone who has joined us tonight. Johnny, Johnny, left alone in there by the end of it, talking to himself, he's saying, but we appreciate your support, Johnny. Love it. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Simon. No worries. Thanks for having me on. All right. And thank you very much for joining us as well, Steve. Cheers, mate. Pleasure. All right, as I always say, smash that like and subscribe button, people. Go and follow us on the Arsenal Show on Twitter. Um, if you are watching on Facebook, make sure you come over to KS1 TV and smash that subscribe button. Make sure you change the settings so we can see who you are, so we're not talking to a negative. If you are watching on Twitter, go into the comment section on that post, click the link below and press the subscribe. You can even watch it while you're watching on Twitter. How generous am I? All right. Thanks for joining us, people. Peace out. Stay safe and wash your hands.